We're on a search for one of the greatest powers ever known. A new clue leads Discovery to a dangerous expedition on the planet Trill. This quest. Here we go. On the next exciting episode of Star Trek Discovery. Welcome, friends. We're back talking Star Trek Discovery Season 5, the third episode of this final season, all the way up to uh, the second MacGuffin Finding mission. This one's entitled Janal, and we are trilling in the name of. But if you don't want spoilers, this is your last chance to duck out. Now let's get on with the show. So right off the bat, I know I'm probably going to ruffle some feathers on either side of the fence because I've seen a lot of people praising this as a fantastic episode. I've also seen a lot of people saying that this is probably the worst episode Discovery's had in a long time. And while I personally think this is by far the weakest episode of this fifth season so far, I did find some good redeeming value in it. So let's talk about the things I both liked and disliked. We had a couple different storylines going on in this episode. The Saru and Tarina stuff entirely disconnected. So if you recall, last episode was that final mission between Saru and Michael. They're saying goodbye while they were finding the first real piece of this progenitor map or whatever it is. So that was a nice send-off for them. So we deal entirely with Saru and his ambassadorial duties and his uh, upcoming marriage to Tarina. And I guess they have their first fight in this, uh, this part of the storyline. Which leads me to something that's a trope in TV and movies that kind of gets on my nerves. Maybe it's my sheltered upbringing or something. But when you have somebody that's engaged, you have these people that are already planning to get married and they're experiencing things that should be something they should have experienced well and truly before they made that decision to take that plunge for marriage. In this case, it's the first fight, the first real fight between Tarina and Saru. And Saru's like, I don't even know how to deal with this. It's never happened to me before. I get that that's probably something that makes good logical sense in a relationship story, but they've already committed to getting married. Similar to in sitcoms and movies and stuff, when they have the Christmas episode and they put up the Christmas tree and decorate and all of that stuff on Christmas Eve. What is the point? in that maybe this is stuff that goes on in uh, other relationships other people's christmas celebrations things like that but that's just something that always gets me like how are you entering into this situation before you've really taken the time to experience the full gamut of relationship issues ahead of time a little bit of a tangent that has nothing to do with their actual relationship i liked the way they dealt with it it was a very kind of mature thing but i also feel that the whole ambassadorial part of saru job here could have been a little bit more fleshed out I guess he's already doing these duties as far as um you know negotiating for planets rights and stuff but we as the audience know absolutely nothing about the region of space he's negotiating for we don't really know the ins and the outs and I know that's not really the point of discovery and they're probably just doing this to keep Saru in the show I just would have liked a little bit more fleshing out because as it stands that entire part of the episode felt empty it felt less lived in and it felt more like I don't know just kind of this ancillary thing they were sticking off to the side I would have just liked that to be a bit more fleshed out we had a few characters a few cool aliens that Vulcan guy that kind of led to the disagreement. And then we also learn about this whole loyalist Vulcan faction, which could potentially be a big player in some situations going on. Just not really worked out enough in my mind to feel warranted to have that much screen time. Again, digressions are the name of the game in this video here. All the Rainer stuff, pretty good in my opinion, although something that was very, um, on the nose is they had two full scenes where Rainer was getting introduced to the new and exciting bridge crew. Lieutenant Naya, Lieutenant Ara, Commander Reese, Commander Asha, and Lieutenants Gallo, Linus, and Christopher. We had another scene where he was taking these uh, 15 second meetings with people, 20 words or less, where each and every new bridge crew, I guess. I don't know how to really explain this. The ones we don't really know a lot about, like Detmer and Owo and stuff. Not that we know a great deal about them either, but they weren't part of this thing. This was more of tell don't show i like the fact that they're giving us a little something of these characters that we've spent time with and we know nothing about we get a little bit of personality from their mouth reciting here's something i like here's something that's part of my history but 
that's not giving us a real exploration of these characters. I would prefer if they actually explored these people by maybe sending them on an away mission, having them deal with the main storyline, and then we come to learn something about them through action as opposed to, in essence, a cameo appearance where they walk in and say, I like Constitution class ships. Bye. See in three episodes. Again, another pet peeve of mine, but that's something that I know they were purposely doing to address the fact that we as fans are saying we know nothing about these characters, but in the cheapest and least earned way possible. The other thing that fell a little bit flat for me, and again, this is possibly up to me because I didn't go back and rewatch the prior seasons before this came out, and it's been so long since we actually experienced them that I might just not be reconnecting as well, but the Grey and Adira relationship just felt like they were throwing it in because they needed to. You said there was something that you wanted to talk to me about? Yeah, I just... I just... It seems like you've been doing really well. I didn't really resonate with it because it's been so long since we spent any time with them together. And even when we did, Grey almost always felt like a plot device and not an actual character. And that, I think, was because they wanted to kind of play up Adira as the actual crew member. But once that was resolved, Grey was just kind of there. I know they tried to make this uh, pseudo family thing with the uh, Culber and, and Stamets as well. But that always just felt like they didn't know what they were doing. So they tried to kind of bring people together so they could just kind of adopt the feelings that we as the audience had for these other characters. So this really felt more like an obligation to the storyline to kind of tie up a loose end then it actually felt like a real world earned situation and that left me feeling a little bit unconcerned with the outcome like and subscribe like and subscribe like and subscribe but that part did lead me to one of my huge ups for this episode and that was the entire trill storyline outside of that relationship. The entire story of trying to get this information from an 800-year-old trill, well, actually, probably well over 800 years old, because 800 years ago, this trill, who turns out to be Janal, was on the expedition with the Romulan scientists and some others to find this progenitor technology. Turns out this progenitor tech was going to be all sorts of, you know, um, the Genesis device souped up to over 9,000. It could potentially turn the tide of the entire galaxy, kill all these people. Re all this world ending, galaxy ending potential. So that's why they decided we as a quadrant, as a galaxy, as a people, as a species, as a coalition, whatever you want to say, don't have the ability to utilize this in the correct way. So they went out of their way to hide it from prying eyes, which I like. That's something I actually discussed in the last video that uh, it felt like they should have fleshed that period of time out a little bit. It was just kind of like, oh, Picard and these people found it. And then it just got lost. So they're actually fleshing it out. There is a reason people were unable to locate this for so long because they set up this elaborate scavenger hunt for when the correct time came people that were more evolved and more enlightened would be able to get to it and do correct things instead of just destroying the galaxy. Leading me down the path to think that my Kovic theory might hold some water, video on that coming soon. So I really, really like this. Pretty much everything from when Jacob met Selmak. If you agree to the blending, we could be together for a very long time. Sorry, wrong franchise. When Colbert had the consciousness of Janal transferred into him. That was pretty much the best part of this episode, and I wish they had done a little bit more with that and a little less with all of the surrounding stuff. Granted, there was a lot of story they tried to tie up and tell here, especially since it's the final season, which I know they didn't know at the time. It feels a little bit better because they're kind of adding elements that will give us closure. We only had this one consciousness transfer, so we only had Colbert with Janelle in his body. I would have loved if they had done something similar to uh, when Jadzia did this in DS9 and all of the characters had a different personality put in them. It would have been very fun to see some of the other actors get a chance to play these differing characters. But 
since we don't know a heck of a lot about tons of Discovery's crew already, to see them playing against type outside of maybe Michael, Book, Stamets, um, even Rainer wouldn't really work because we don't know much about him. Adira couldn't do it because a joined Trill wouldn't work for this. So if they were to do that, maybe Tilly, there aren't all that many people that could play against type as a new character. Also something I thought was a potential missed opportunity, and granted, this is my own writing in my head, so it's not something I can really ding the episode for not doing. This would have been a fantastic way to get that Jonathan Frakes Riker cameo into Discovery, because this is a trill we know lived 800 years ago at the time of this uh, whole progenitor situation, the chase. Riker was a joined trill for a very brief amount of time back then. So if they were to go ahead and do that weird thing where they have the, the mindscape and we see all the past hosts, that could have been a way to get a Jonathan Frakes cameo in here. I know it wouldn't have necessarily made sense. And I 100% love the fact that they didn't give us a trill we already know, especially they didn't pull a this is actually a Dax, because that makes the universe just feel oh so small. So while it would have been a fun way to get him in here, I'm kind of glad they went with a character we don't already know. We also learn in this episode that the next location is going to be... But they're in Zimgethi space, so we can't go until the diplomats clear the way. That's kind of interesting, and we learn a little bit more about the Breen, seemingly setting them up to be some kind of antagonist or at least a main threat or component. Hopefully we actually get to see them in action more so than just these references. And I know a lot of speculation is going on that Locke is a Breen. I don't think that's necessarily the case. I think there's more to him than that, but that all remains to be seen. The Cloak Beast, fun, I guess. It's not the most exciting thing. I know we saw a part of that in the preseason trailer, so that was a bit spoiled. Maybe I'm just jaded, but a lot of these long, exaggerated fight scenes just kind of draw on a bit too much, and I find myself checking out. But I do very much appreciate them utilizing their um, personal transporters as a form of, you know, just combat tactics. When they actually utilize parts of their environment in a useful manner, that's always something that leads me back to, okay, somebody put thought into this writing. Good seeing Reno for the 2.5 seconds she was in the episode. Last time I did this, they gave me chips. I don't know how much more we're going to see her, but that was another plus. And, oh, hi, Maul. She was hiding in the uh, the Trill Chamber, I guess, the whole time, or at least part of it. And she slipped some sort of, I'm assuming, uh, tracking device on Adira. So that's probably going to lead to some sort of confrontation next episode. What were your thoughts on this episode? What are your thoughts of this season? Where do you think we are going? I was a little disheartened to not see any real Laak and Maul teaming up in this episode. Hopefully, we get a lot more of that next episode. And based on what I've heard from people that have apparently seen the whole season already, episode four is supposed to be something special. So fingers crossed it's a big step up from this episode, at least in my opinion. Hopefully this was just the relationship calm before the really cool storm. Leave all your thoughts down below. Like, share, subscribe, do all those fancy YouTube things. But until next time, this guy really works out.